everyone and welcome back to another video. My name is Juan Londoño and today's topic, volunteering with heart. Seven tips for doing it right. Although this channel, I was going to say this video, but this channel is a photography channel. This video really does apply to anybody that's giving up their time voluntarily to do anything, right? For anybody else. There are two situations that I've been in um, where was, this was really obvious, right? Others not so much because most people are caring. There was a situation a few years ago where <clears throat> a gentleman volunteered and I volunteered to do some photography uh, for an organization. I'm not going to give any details away. So we both agreed. We show up with our cameras and we shoot pictures of the event. They told us it was going to be about an hour and a half, two hours. And I was more, more than happy to, to help out because this was a wonderful organization. I knew many of the people there. They're all wonderful people. Uh, just a great event and I was just so happy to, to participate, right? When you're working with people like that, you do it with so much pleasure. So we start working, you know, he's working on one end, I'm working at another, and the day comes to an end. I don't know if they had told us when we had to turn them around or not. I'm not sure of that. Maybe they did, maybe they hadn't. But I know specifically that on the way home, I got a call and, and they said, will you be able to turn these pictures in, you know, either tonight or by tomorrow morning. And I thought, ooh, this was a Sunday, right? So I thought, that doesn't give me a lot of time because I work, I have a job, right? So, you know, if I don't get them done tonight, I... So I immediately said yes. I didn't even think about it. I just said yes because I knew, you know, it was only like 3 o'clock, 3.30 by the time I got done, maybe 4. I knew I had time, right? I was just going to have to do it till midnight, basically. So I said, yes, count on those pictures because they needed them to send to another country so that the next morning they can pump them into the news, right? That's how important these pictures were, even though they were just volunteer work. About four months go by and I'm sitting with the leader of this organization and he shakes my hand and he says, thank you once again for those pictures. Not only were they beautiful, but you saved our life because the other photographer, you know, he turned them in on Friday. And we didn't need them by then. We basically never even looked at them because we had already used all your pictures. I take stuff like that very serious and you probably do too. I hope you do. Uh, but not everybody does, right? So there's the difference. So here are the things I want to talk about regarding this topic. Point number one, treat your, you know, your non-paid or volunteer work no different than your paid work. You never know who's looking, right? So this may actually lead to another opportunity. That's happened to me before. So you want to be uh, doing your best work because you never know who's looking. The people you're doing it for, you know, everything regarding your life, your attitude that day, your schedule, none of that's important to them. You've already committed to them that you were going to do this and they're expecting the same quality that they see everywhere else, whether it's on your website or the jobs they see when you've shot weddings. They're expecting that level of quality and it's our obligation to turn it in. I mean, we volunteered, right? Point number two, do it well, do it right just because. There's an old quote and I can't remember who said it. It's a very famous quote. It says, character is defined by what we do when we think that nobody's watching. When I'm walking out of the bathroom and I throw a piece of paper in the trash and it falls on the floor and I know 10 people saw me, well, it's easy to bend down, pick it up, throw it in the, in the garbage and walk out. But what do I do when I think nobody is watching? When I'm walking out, I throw that paper in the trash, it falls outside the trash, and I know nobody saw me or I think nobody saw me. What do I do then? That's what defines character. Personally, I fear that somebody would walk by, not see it and slip on it. That alone freaks me out. And I go back and I throw it in. And when I see other papers around, I'll take my paper and I'll pick up all the others and I throw them in the trash because that frightens me. And knowing that I could have avoided something like that, uh, you know, that to me means the world. So I pick that stuff up. But not everybody's like that. The worst part is some people will do, you know, a volunteer gig and they'll do a crappy job. They're moving quick. They're doing shoddy work. They're treating people a little disrespectfully. And people are looking. And the worst part is they, they, they don't care. These photographers don't care because they're not getting paid, right? Who cares? Bad attitude. If money is the only reason we do anything, 
we probably need to start by looking at Simon Sinek's book, Start With Why. That's the name of the book, Start With Why. Uh, or any of Robert Kiyosaki's books, you know, or any billionaire or like 100 million and up millionaire, the real serious ones, the first thing they tell you is money can't be the only reason you do something because you're never going to have enough because that's all you're focused on. You always want more. The minute you focus on helping people, all of that money will come, right? And then you're focused on helping people. That's why the money's coming. If there's a superior power, you want to call it Mother Nature, energy, for whatever it is, right? Think about it. Who's this superior power going to help? The person that's going after money or the person that's going after helping people? Now, that's for, you know, the people that believe in this superior power. Those of you that don't, just, like I said at the beginning, do it just because. And remember, how we do one thing is how we do everything. That's another famous quote, right? So, if we teach ourselves to do things with pride, everything we do is going to be with pride, even volunteer work. If we truly want to be better photographers, better dads, better husbands, better friends, better brothers, better sisters, I'm not a sister. Um, it starts with the small stuff, right? And this is famous too. When we learn to do the simple things well, doing the difficult things well becomes easy and it becomes ingrained in us. So we take on this volunteer job, it ends up being this complicated thing that we weren't expecting. Guess what? We're gonna treat that event like we treat any other event with the same level of excellence. I'm not gonna say perfection because we all know about perfection, right? Um, so we can chase it, but it doesn't exist. But excellence, excellence does exist, right? So when I do a job, I do it with the best level of excellence I can, right? If I'm not feeling sick or hurt, you know, I'm going to give it everything I have. And, uh, and even though it's volunteer work, I feel so happy when I look at those pictures and I edit them and they look gorgeous. Oh my gosh. To me, it's no different that I didn't get paid or got paid. The fact is I cranked out another set of awesome images that people are going to love. That makes me so happy. Number three, don't shortchange yourself by walking down this path of mediocrity. The greatest musical compositions of our time. When I say our time, I mean life in general, right? Because you look at pieces from Mozart, Beethoven, all of these people, right? They're still around. Pop comes and goes. Some of it is really good, and we still listen to some music of the 80s and 70s and, of course, 60s. But, but this music goes way back, and we still enjoy it, right? The composers that put this stuff together, they weren't thinking about mediocrity, just putting something together so they can check off the box and say, I did something today. No, 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 no. They gave it everything. They would close their eyes, and in Beethoven's case, he was almost deaf uh, at the end, and, um, and they would pour their heart into this. And you know what? I'm so grateful to them because I love that music, and I listen to it all the time. And that's how I feel about my photography. I want my photography to be the same way. I'm hoping that 100, 200 years from now, people will still be looking at my images. That's my plan. First, I have to get my website out so I can put all my images out there. But that's my plan, right? So my point is, have a plan to be eternal, to have your stuff live forever, even the stuff you do voluntarily. Do it because you want to feel great about your work. Do it because you want other people other people to feel great about your work. And simply, as we said in the beginning, because it's the right thing to do. Number four, reserve these free jobs for special occasions. If you're taking too many, then you may get burned out and you may start acting like this is a drag, I don't wanna do this anymore, I'm gonna take my time editing this, ah, I'll get them done whenever. Maybe that's what happened to that other photographer, maybe he was taking too many you know, volunteer gigs. Um, pick those carefully, I usually pick those you know, for organizations that are really special, for people that come to me that are really special, special causes. I don't do those that often. I was doing them a little more often in the past. I don't do them that often anymore, maybe twice a year. So when I do them, I do them with a lot of gusto. And don't be afraid of doing a good job with your photography, makeup, whatever it is, when you volunteer, thinking that if I'm too good, they're gonna call me all the time. Yeah, they probably are. Learn to say no. There are times they may call you another six months down the road and say, hey, we need you to do this again. Are you available? Oh, I'm sorry, I got busy. You know, I, I can't right now. There's no way I can squeeze it in. But, you know, call me the next time. Uh, maybe I'll have a little more time on my hands. 
you know? Um, it's okay for them to call somebody else. There are other photographers, and that's what they're going to do, right? Um, you don't want to burn yourself out doing these things. Maybe they call you six months from now and you haven't done anything else, you're going to say yes. But you get the point, right? If they call you every month and it's like, oh, I, I, I can't commit myself. You know, just be honest up front. I can't commit myself to this frequency because I have like 30 other things going on. But, you know, call me like every six to eight months and we'll work something out. I'll make sure that I can help you guys. That's it. This other point is still part of number four, which is, you know, reserving those volunteer jobs for special occasions and for special people. Um, this is just telling you that some people are going to want to take advantage of you. I got a call once and I did an event. It was a cultural event. And it was huge. It was outdoors. It started at noon and it ended at midnight. And this was different from, from others that I've talked about. I, I have never mentioned this one. And um, I did it with a lot of pride and, and uh, I was really happy about it because the people that I was working with were wonderful. I knew them. But the people that asked me to do it, I, I didn't know from a hole in the wall. And originally I asked about, you know, how much can you pay? And they were like, well, we don't have a budget. And I was like, okay. They said, you know what? We don't have a budget this year, but we know we're going to have a budget next year. And we'll call you again next year. And next year we're going to pay you well. And I thought, that's a great opportunity. And who knows who I'll meet at this event, give my card out. You know, back in those days we were giving cards. I spent the whole 12 hours there. I was wasted by the next morning. Well, you know what? A year went by and I get a call. I'm at home. You want to do the event this year? We loved your photographs. They were breathtaking. I mean, I really did some good work that time. Um, and I said, absolutely. What are we talking about? How much is the pay going to be? Well, you know, what were you thinking? I'm like, well, I charged them a fraction of what I would have charged, you know, just a regular commercial job that called me, right? And they still said, uh, let us think about it. You know what they did? They ended up calling five other photographers and got the one that, that took it and told them the same thing. We're going to have money to pay you next year. And you can't go on like that. You can't because people catch on. I spoke to some people, models that were up on the stage around the musicians that they were inviting. I spoke to so many people that said they were so disappointed in those events because not only did they pay late, sometimes they didn't pay at all, but they always lied. And you can't do that, right? So be aware as a photographer, makeup artist, designer, whatever you do, be aware. You know, um, if you screw me once, shame on you. If you screw me twice, shame on me, right? You may fall the first time because you weren't expecting it, right? You didn't know they were dirty, but don't fall the second time, okay? So we've reached the conclusion, right? I hope this was useful. Uh, if you did find it useful, please like and subscribe below. Um, the whole point of this video is, it's really two points. One is don't just give your time away to anybody. Be careful who you give your time away to. If you want to give something away, give money. Money you can always make. Your time you'll never make back. Those 12 hours I spent that day, I will never ever make back. Those were 12 hours I didn't spend with my wife. I'll never make them back. So think about that. The other point is when you decide to do a volunteer job, do it as best as you can. Do it no different than any other job. You keep your respect. You keep your pride, right? Your honor to your work. And people will continue to love you for what you are. A great photographer. From the bottom of my heart, thank you for coming on and always giving me your time. Love you guys. And I hope you continue doing well. Until the next time, ciao for now.